When we plan to buy any product, we watch hundreds of videos and look for its pros and cons so that we buy the best one. In the same way, choosing the right programming language is crucial for any aspiring data scientist. And today we will explore the strengths and weaknesses of the two most popular choices, Python and R, in the field of data science. But wait, can they only be used for the data science? Let's find out. Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to the Data Scientist. This is Ranjit. And today we have an exciting topic lined up python versus r choosing the right programming language for the data science so let's first talk about python choosing a right programming language is really important before choosing the let's say the architecture itself of of the project that you are working on because the end product can vary based on the the programming language choose to work with so the first one is the web development Python frameworks like Django and Flask are, are widely used for building the web application and the APIs. And then tools like Beautiful Soup and Scrappy are used for scrapping the websites to get the data from. But see, um, it's not only the Python which can be used for the web development or let's say well, developing a web application. There are other programming language which can be used for uh, web application development. Um, what I've personally seen, the Django library can be used for uh, the backend purpose, but I would not recommend to use it for the front-end uh, development. The second one is the data science and the machine learning. Python has an extensive library for the data science, uh, like pandas, numpy, and then for data visualization, we have matplotlib, uh, seaborn, and then for the machine learning, we have a PyTorch, we have TensorFlow, we have scikit-learn. It is widely used for the tasks like data analysis, data manipulation, like I said, then predictive modeling, natural language processing is another option we have, and then the computer vision. The third option that we have with Python can be used is the scripting and automation. For this, I would surely recommend Python uh, language because of its uh, simplicity and the readability. So whenever you ask anyone to, um, you know, about which programming language to start using, if you are a new the programming world, everyone will suggest you the Python. Because of this reason, because it's very easy to read and uh, it's very simple to learn. The commonly used tasks like file manipulation, system administration, and batch process. The fourth one is of course a desktop UI application. Libraries like Kinter, PyQt, and WX Python enable developers to develop a cross-platform application or desktop application with the graphical user interface. But again, like I said, um, you have other options like C Sharp, uh, C++. Um, these programming languages are used more frequently than the Python because there are some, I would say, no, uh, when it comes to large projects, it's better to use other programming. Now the game development can also be done with the libraries like Pygame for 2D games or with the engines like Unity using the Python API. Uh, but um, I would not go with Python for the game development. Uh, better to use the C Sharp or let's say C++ or we, or we have a Java programming language used uh, game development. Then we have mobile app development, which can also uh, be developed with the help of Python libraries. We have Kiwi, we have Beware. See, Python can be used to develop mobile applications, which can be run, on, which can run on both iOS as well as Android. But um, Python is not made for you know um, the game development or let's say for the mobile app development. I would again go with let's say React or let's say native React to develop the mobile app develop, uh, application. Seventh, we have uh, DevOps and uh, the system administration. See, Python is very commonly used uh, for tasks related to the DevOps. Like we have automation, we have conf configuration management, tools like Ansible. Then uh, we can also do the infrastructure management. Then we have scientific computing. Um, of course, Python can be used for the scientific computing with the help of libraries like we have SciPy, then we have um, SimPy, which can be used for the tasks like numerical computing or let's say numerical simulations. Then we have optimizations and then symbolic mathematics. Python again can be used for the in, in the in the domain in the education. Then we have IoT or let's say Internet of Things. It can be used in the projects like uh, data collection, data analysis, and then control of IoT devices. And then we have financial and uh, quantitative analysis. See. <coughs> Even though Python is extensively used in the field of finance for tasks like 
uh, algorithmic trading or risk management and then we have financial modeling but and then i'm also uh, having another you know uh, playlist swing trading with python python can be used for the trading but i would not recommend for hfts because hfts needs or hft is basically high frequency trading for high frequency trading you need data to be um, it, it's like a fast world you, you things are done in the microsecond so python is not for uh, something needs the solution within microseconds for that you have c++, c++ right um, so swing trading is okay because the reaction time is not something you need to have within microseconds but for the trading part you need the data to be processed in a scientific way for that you can use the python programming then last but not the least we have audio and video process in this again python for sure can be used for uh, such activities um, with the help of uh, programming language or let's say with the help of libraries like limbrosa and opencv for the tasks like audio signal processing and video analysis and then we have computer vision right so by now you must you must have understood you know where the python can be used and even though where uh, python can be used in multiple um, scenarios but somewhere it's not always recommended to use in the in the field where the solution needs to be um, acted on very fast right now let's talk about our programming language which is again a very powerful programming language and um, and it's an environment specifically designed for statistical computing and, uh, and and graphics so here are some of the most key tasks i would say uh, where the r is is commonly used so the first one that we have is data analysis and the visualization r offers a wide range of statistical and graphical uh, techniques uh, for data analysis and visualization uh, the libraries like ggplot2 we, we have plotly and then we have lattice these are popular for creating high quality graphics and visualization then uh, we have statistical modeling so r provides an extensive functionality for statistical modeling which includes uh, linear and non non linear modeling uh, time series analysis clustering and regression analysis the packages like stats mass and caret offers a broad range of statistical models and algorithms so similar to um, python r also provides powerful tools for the data manipulation and transformation including uh, the functions of let's say data cleaning reshaping and merging statistics uh, so it's like both programming language can be used for the similar tasks but uh, it's about you know how easy it is for you to learn uh, and that's where you know choosing a right programming language comes so uh, in the data manipulation we can use diplr and then we have tider packages which are very commonly used for data science uh, or let's say the data manipulation tasks then we have machine learning of course uh, how can we you know uh, ignore this since python has a very growing uh, ecosystems now ecosystem now r is also having a very much popular ecosystem for uh, machine learning uh, which includes the packages for tasks like classification regression clustering is there and then dimension dimensionality reduction is there and these includes packages like xzboost then we have keras then we have caret and uh, last but not not the least we have random forest next one is of course the time series analysis um, R is widely used for time series analysis and forecasting with foca uh, with packages like forecast then we have TSA and zoo so, so these offers functions for the time series decomposition then um, we have seasonality detection and then trend analysis so apart from statistics i would say next one next one is bioinformatics um, which in which the R is widely used it's widely used for the for analyzing the biological data which include genomics uh, proteomics and then uh, transcriptomics see bioconductor is a widely used repository of r uh, packages for uh, bioinformatics and i will not go many f uh, deep into all these things but again it can be used for the web scrapping uh, we can develop interactive dashboards we can use it for the rep reproductible uh, research field as well but again um, like i said you know like similar to python you can use it but the question comes it whether you should do it or not because python and r is not recommended when it comes to let's say uh, web development or game app development and uh, mobile app development these are these uh, programming languages are mostly used for the research part 
uh, let us say uh, statistical part uh, and then data cleaning, data manipulating part, but not something wherein you need the, the result very spontaneous. Now let us talk about since now we, we went through you know what both these programming languages Python and R can do. Now the question comes which one is better right. So let us start with the basics. So Python and R have very different syntaxes when it comes to the programming language or let us say the code part uh, which you write. Python is known for its clean readable code and making it an excellent choice for the beginners for sure. But R is um, designed specifically for let us say um, data analysis and uh, statistics. The choice here I would say depends on the personal preferences but uh, if you are a beginner for sure go with the Python. Now let us talk about the li libraries and ecosystems of both these programming language. See uh, since Python is being used very widely so it is the list of libraries are huge or let us say the collection of libraries are very huge. I am not saying that R does not have the uh, those kind of libraries because both of so let us say when um, a, a library is developed uh, within Python that is also replicated for the R environment as well. But Python has libraries like pandas, numpy which provide a powerful tool for the data manipulation and analysis. And then um, contrary we have libraries like ggplot2 which is uh, again a good uh, library when it comes to the R programming language. So considering, so now it is up to you, uh, you know which uh, programming language to choose for uh, when it comes to the collection of libraries because again uh, with the with the experience you will get to know you know uh, which library or let us say which programming language to for which kind of library. Now um, the question comes in how the integration uh, you know uh, with the other tools comes in when it comes to the Python and the R. So both these languages uh, I would say go well with others but Python has a broader integration uh, capability right. So, since now many many developers are working on uh, the Python uh, know, environment, so they tend to develop more um, libraries uh, which can be uh, integrated with other tools. So the popular tools like TensorFlow, we have Scikit-Learn. Um, these programming languages are widely used in the machine learn machine learning projects, and then these are developed in in Python. Now we have community and support. Um, this is really crucial because if you are not able to find out um, a particular solution or let us say the logic then um, it is really recommended to go out in the in the web world and you know look for the solution. And going to the community uh, of, of uh, any programming language and getting the solution is really crucial right. Even though now we have chat GPT but um, yeah uh, interacting with the human is much better. So my Python has a very large or extensive uh, active community. Um, which again includes uh, the documentation and then uh, there are like numerous online resources available. But I am not saying that R does not have the community, it does have um, but it is relatively small when it uh, when we compare it with the Python. So I will always recommend if you are a beginner you know go through of course you can go through the videos um, but there are like forums, uh, tutorials and communities available. Uh, which you can go through and learn from them. Now this is very really crucial uh, you know while choosing a programming language because if a programming language can give you a solution but if you if it is not a performing uh, you know project then I would say not to go with that programming language. You need to consider uh, you know the performance when you are working with a large data set right. Because with the increasing of the data set, uh, the performance also uh, varies. So as a general purpose language, I would recommend to use Python, but if you are working on a large uh, project and then it needs to fed the data continuously, right? And uh, like let us say the stock market analysis or let us say um, when it comes to decision making uh, on, on fast moving data, then Python is not. And the same goes for the R as well. I mean R is good. Um, but I will not say that you know a decision making can be done with the programming language R and Python but action cannot be performed as fast as the other programming language like uh, C++ or Java. 
Now let's talk about the use cases. Python is of course widely adopted in the areas like the web development and we have artificial intelligence and automation. When I say web development, it need not to be a front end web development, but um, Django can be used for the back end uh, web development. Then you, we have RESTful APIs which can be used or developed with the help of Python programming language. Uh, in the R, we can say, um, you can use it for, like I said, you know, statistical purpose, purposes and in the fields like, let's say, uh, bioinformatics and then we have um, econometrics. So in the industry, I would say people does use Python um, most of the time, but that is, uh, I would say it's a de facto, you know, uh, language for many data science roles um, given its uh, versatility. But see, some organizations use um, or have been using different languages and sometimes it's not easy to migrate from one programming language to another uh, when you have an existing solution. So it always changes from industry to industry. There are like, you know, many, many uh, programming language uh, already existing. So I would say start with uh, a programming language like uh, Python and then you can of course uh, change your uh, you know, uh, the, the skills based on the requirement of particular industry. So yeah, the conclusion is um, there is no one size fit answer for um, you know, choosing uh, right when it comes to Python versus R. But the choice between the Python and R depends on your, let's say, the preferences, project requirements, and the career goals. The career goals as well. I would say take the time to experiment, experiment with both the programming language, and then you will understand, you know, which which language to use at what scenario. So, and then again, it depends on you know whether you want to go um, easy on you or not, right? But Apart from Python and R, do go for other languages as well, explore them and then you will find uh, your uh, compatible programming language. So thank you so much for joining me um, today on The Data Scientist and uh, if you find this video helpful, so don't forget to like, share and subscribe. If you have any questions or topics that you would like me to cover in the future videos, please leave me a comment below and I will surely take it. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Take care.